Hi and welcome to uh, the first video post by VA Classic Cameras. Um, today we're going to be looking at the screw mount Leica and in particular loading film into the screw mount Leica. Well, I started off using these cameras about 20 years ago and at the time there wasn't a lot of information about and it was quite daunting and I lost a lot of film uh, through trial and error. So like a do-do uh, templates and cutting tools which you can use very successfully um, and they produce absolutely beautiful results. We do stock them at VA Classic Cameras, we find that they complete collections and they do look amazing, however the practical use of them when you've got to cart them around in the field or when you're out all day shooting um, is a bit of a pain. So this is my take on how to load a film into this screw mount Leica. This particular Leica is a Leica 3C um, from 1941 1942 and it is a wartime camera and you can tell that by the stepper or the step there on the rewind. So loading film into this camera. All Leica screw mounts have a base plate and they all have a locking mechanism like this and this locking mechanism is designed twofold. It is designed to uh, keep the base plate on, the camera light tight but also when you're using the reloadable film cassettes, the X-Moves, the Filkus, it's designed then to open and shut them to keep them light tight uh, for uh, in and out of the camera. So, um, looking at the camera, you'll have a take-up spool and the take-up spool is located under this and this is the advance, um, the film advance. So like I have put a little diagram inside um, as you can see, it shows the orientation of the film and how to cut the film. So, let's have a quick look at this, shall we? Let's pop this camera down there and get our film out. So you may be able to notice that the um, is cut square. Um, this is because this is my second take of trying to uh, trying to do this uh, first video and uh, and all that. Anyway orientation of the film. If we look at this you will see the film and the take up spool and these are orientated to show you that they sit that way there. So the film will sit like so that way there. So these two bits always technically face up or down when the camera is orientated correctly. So take up spool, you will notice this one's fairly brassed, it's been fairly well used. There's a little slot here and uh, in this slot you can see an arrow. The uh, film side of the film, 35mm film, slots into this point here. Now I've still got to cut this film as yet. This is just to show how this goes in and how easy it is to do this on film while you're being filmed. Oh, not too bad at all. So that's the film now held in. So when the film is in camera, the film comes from here, but then it snakes this way around the advance. So the film will run that way. So what I do, uh, I've always done, is I always think it's better to sacrifice a couple of frames to make sure you've loaded rather than get home and realise that you've actually loaded your film and you've just been advancing nothing. Um, so, usually you can get 39 frames out of a film, um, so by losing two frames you're not really going to uh, lose that much and you're certainly going to make sure that the, uh, the film is engaged. So, like I say, 10 centimetres. I usually measure between this point here. So now I've got my distance. I should remove that from the uh, take up spool. Let's have the take up spool down there. Let's set the camera down there so we don't knock it. And we will need to cut the leader. So as the film is being inserted that way into the camera, this becomes the top, this section here. This is the bottom. And to make sure our film is uh, correctly orientated in the camera, we need to cut this part of the leader out here. So we take a nice pair of scissors and cut our leader. 
So it's a straight cut through, making sure you don't cut the camera. So this is the part which will be inserted into the film. Small. So what we need to do is we need to make sure we have a nice curve here, which won't snag anything. So I'm going to take that sprocket there, I'm going to cut down, and it is a bit tricky. Put that down to there, cut that into there, and now I'm going to start curving up. So we'll lay that over there. I'm just going to trim that up there because I don't want that sprocket there. I'll put the scissors down there and take that out to there. So, not the most eloquent, but it will certainly work. And uh, when it's raining, you're trying to do this under a coat, it becomes even more exciting. So we now slot the film back into here, exactly as we did before, into this little take up, this little holder here. So you can now see the uh, perforations of the arrow, and that's now been held. And that stands there like so. So let's just move that out of the way. We turn our camera up to there. So as we said before, this is how the film advances. So I'm just going to advance this to here. Actually, before we do that, I'm just going to turn this to here. So I'm going to pull the perforations back into the cassette. And we'll start coming in the room. There we go. So this means now that I'll have no snagging when I put my film in. So the film sits in that orientation there. And that now sits into there. So now you can see the film sliding into the camera. And it just gets pushed down to there. Just turn the rewind just to make sure that this part of the cartridge is actually sat down. So, that's the film in the camera. So to make sure that the film is actually in the camera, and it's fine, what I always do is I just put my finger on there, lift the rewind, and then just put some tension on the film. And usually I find that by tensioning the film at the beginning, you make sure, certainly with the old screw mount likers, that you are pulling the film through certainly evenly. So, I'm now going to advance this and you can see the shirts and curtains going. Now with their film speed set to Z, open this up, you can now see the film is connected to both the top and the bottom sprockets and is being pulled through correctly. So at this point we'll do that one more time. I wouldn't necessarily do this again but just to show what's going on. And now open that up. And as you can see, the film is now fully engaged and fully running through the sprockets. So at this point, we're good to close the lid up. Again, the base plate will align this point to this point, and this will go into there. So that's basically the case into there. And that holds the, uh, that holds that. The base plate on, we lock that in. We can wind that on now because our shutter curtain protects everything. All that's left to do is attach our lens. This is a 50mm f2 and set the shutter count, the uh, film counter. So the film counter you have to set manually. What I always do is I always set it one before zero click and then the next time I wind on I will be at zero. So 
So I hope this has been helpful and I hope you uh, tune in and uh, for more tutorials on uh, how to use these screw mount cameras. Thank you very much.